Today, I want to show you how math can actually make your games better, whether that's through smarter gameplay mechanics or even leveling up your visual effects. Don't worry, this is not going to be an in-depth math class. Instead, I will show you simple practical examples directly inside Unreal Engine, so you can see how these ideas might apply in your actual games, starting with one of the most fundamental tools in game development, vectors. Vectors are everywhere in game development. They tell us where something is, which direction it's moving and how fast it's going. At the core, a vector is just a set of numbers representing direction and magnitude. In Unreal Engine, you can create vectors using a vector and out of the box, it already comes with a ton of useful functions. But today, I want to focus on one specific function that can solve a lot of problems for you. Let's say you have an enemy NPC patrolling around and you wanted to detect if the player is in front of it. But how can you figure that out mathematically? That's where the dot product comes in. In simple terms, it measures how similar two directions are. If both vectors point into the same direction, it will return 1. If they point in opposite direction, it will return minus 1. And at a right angle, it will return 0. So to solve the problem in Unreal Engine, you would subtract the enemy's position from from the player's position to get the direction vector. And don't forget to normalize it. Then use f vector dot product with the enemy's forward vector and the direction to the player. To make it easier to understand what is happening, I also have visualized this scenario. The blue sphere is the enemy. The red arrow shows its forward direction and the red lines mark the threshold where the dot product is considered as in view. As I tweak the acceptable dot value, you will see how the visible range gets wider or narrower. Now I add a red sphere which represents the player. The number above it shows the current dot value of the direction between the blue sphere and red sphere and the forward direction of the blue sphere. You will see while moving the red sphere around that the dot product result above it is changing. And when the red sphere moves inside the range it will turn green. Outside of it it turns red again. It turns green when moving inside the range because now the dot product value is greater than the acceptable value we have defined earlier. So this showcases that if the dot product is greater than our defined threshold, our player sphere will be considered as in view by the AI. But the dot product is not only useful for just AI scenarios. You can also use it for visual effects. For example, let's say you want an object's appearance to change based on how it's facing the player camera. Inside Unreal's material editor, you can calculate the dot product between the camera vector and the object's vertex normals. And then you can feed this result into a color ramp node. Just keep in mind that the color ramp node was introduced in Unreal Engine 5.6. So don't be surprised if it doesn't show up for you in earlier versions. If we plug the output from the color ramp node into the material's color, you will see a nice fall off effect driven by the dot product. And if we take a closer look at the vertex normals across the mesh, this effect makes perfect sense. The relationship between the camera vector and the normals varies across the surface, creating the smooth gradient. So this should show you that understanding how vectors work opens up a ton of possibilities. And speaking of that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing way to sharpen your problem solving skills and boost your understanding of math, science, programming, data analysis and AI all through thousands of visual and interactive lessons. What makes Brilliant stand out is its hands on approach. And Brilliant helps you strengthen that mindset by letting you actively engage with problems rather than just memorizing facts. While I'm sharing a few useful math tricks for game development with you today, Brilliant offers a whole range of courses to help you take your math skills even further. If you are looking to dive deeper into topics like the dot product, their vectors course is a great place to start. It's full of practical examples showing how vectors can be used in all sorts of ways. So if you want to give Brilliant a try, you can get full access to everything they offer for free for 30 days. Just visit Brilliant org slash tutorials or click the link in the description or the pinned comment. 
And that's not all, you will also get 20% of an annual premium subscription. Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video, but now let's go and see how we can use math to improve the feel of your animations. Say you want to scale an object from zero to its target size. A common approach is using fmath lerp to interpolate between two vectors. An alpha value of zero gives you the starting value, alpha of one gives you the end value, and an alpha value of 0.5 gives you the halfway point. Typically, we increase this alpha over time by multiplying data time with a speed factor, resulting in a linear scalar. While this works, it also often feels a bit lifeless. To make animations feel more natural, we can use easing functions. A fantastic resource for this is easings.net. There you can preview different easing curves and how they affect motion. For example, easy out cubic starts fast and slows down towards the end, creating a more natural feel. After clicking on a curve, you can scroll down on the side and you will find the math formulas that you can easily replicate inside Unreal Engine. If we now compare a linear interpolation with this ease out cubic, the difference is immediately noticeable. You can try out even more advanced functions like this ease out bounce, which replicates the physical behavior of a ball bouncing in a simplified way. And here is another trick. You can also loop animations with the sine or cosine functions. These functions move smoothly between minus one and one over time. So if we pass in the elapsed time of our game, we will get a continuous seamless loop between minus one and one. Now to visualize your custom equations, I recommend using a tool like the calculator on desmos.com. Here you can simply type in your custom equations and then instantly see a graph that represents it. This makes it much easier to understand your equations than just guessing and tweaking the effects blindly in Unreal. One thing to keep in mind with the sine function is that its output ranges from minus one to one. However, when using Unreal's lerp function, the alpha value needs to be between zero and one. Anything outside that range will cause the result to go beyond the limits you have defined, but sometimes that is also something you would like to happen. A simple solution for this is to take the absolute value of the sine result, which gives you a loop between zero and one. And this you can then simply use as the alpha value for your lerp function. But there's a small downside with this. When taking the absolute value, you will lose the smooth curve at zero that was originally present at minus one. If you want to preserve the smooth natural flow, it's better to remap the sign output from minus one and one to zero and one. That way, you maintain a smooth transition at both the start and end of the scaling animation. And you also don't have to stop there. You can combine multiple sine and cosine functions to create more complex and abstract motion patterns. I highly recommend experimenting with the different equations and tweaking their values. Through this, you will quickly realize that there is a whole world beyond simply linearly interpolating between two values. Before we jump into the final topic, if if you're enjoying videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel for more game dev tips and Unreal Engine tutorials. And a big thanks to everyone already supporting the channel here on YouTube or over on Patreon. If you would like to see your name here as well, maybe think about joining the channel. It really helps and means a lot to me. Finally, let's talk about randomness, something every game relies on in one way or another. This section is based on the Game AI Pro book, which I highly recommend if you want to dive deeper into AI design and you can access it for free on this website. Now, the simplest form of randomness is using something like fmath rand range. This will give you a random value in the range you have provided. However, this method is non-reproducible. So every time you restart your game, you will receive a different sequence of random numbers. And this might not be ideal if you want to debug things related to your random numbers or want to use it for procedural generation. If you want reproducible results, you can use fRandomStream inside Unreal Engine. This you can initialize with a specific seed and it will produce the same sequence of numbers every time you restart your game. Change the seed and you get a new sequence. Perfect for testing different variations. 
Now we can reproduce our generation, but let's see what happens when we generate numbers from 0 to 10,000 times. As you can see here, we get a fairly even distribution. So every number has roughly the same chance to appear if we look at a long enough sequence. But sometimes we don't want this kind of uniform randomness. That is where we can refine things further using Gaussian randomness. Gaussian randomness helps when you want certain values to appear more frequently. And it's pretty simple. Generate multiple random numbers and average them together. This method naturally creates a bell curve, meaning you will get more results clustered around the center and fewer at the extremes. For example, if you generate three random numbers between 0 and 10 and take their average, you are more likely to end up with a 5 than a 2 or an 8. Gaussian randomness can be incredibly useful in game development. For instance, you could use it to control the probability of loot drops, ensuring that rare items don't have the same chance of appearing as common ones. It's also great great for gradually adjusting difficulty by allowing you to introduce tougher enemies step by step rather than too many at once. Finally, let's talk about how you can avoid patterns in your random generation that might feel unfair or frustrating to players. This is where filtered randomness comes into play. For example, let's say you generate a 0 or 1 100 times. When looking at the final sequence, you might notice that sometimes you get something like 4 or even 5 zeros in a row. Depending on what these numbers represent in your game, this could lead to unwanted or unsatisfying outcomes for the player. To fix this, you can define your own rules to modify the generated numbers. For instance, if you detect three zeros in a row, you could force the next number to be a one. This gives you more control and allows you to steer the randomness in a way that keeps the game balanced. Whether that means making it a little easier or a little harder. Of course, usually you won't generate your entire sequence of numbers all at once. Instead, you can simply keep track of the most recent results in an array. And you don't need to store every number generated throughout the game, just enough to check for repeating patterns. While this example focuses on a simple binary case with zeros and ones, filtered randomness can also be applied to more complex scenarios. For more advanced techniques and examples, I recommend checking out chapter 3 of the Game AI Pro book, which also covers how to apply filtered randomness beyond binary situations. But that's it for today. Check out this video next if you want to know about a powerful debugging tool that will change how you work in Unreal Engine.